guys, thanks for checking out this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make my twisted mono biting trace. It's a trace that I use whilst I'm out on the kayak and on the boat fishing for taupe, huss and conger eels. I had quite a few uh, questions on my uh, videos that I've been doing uh, whilst fishing offshore on the kayak and on the boat, um, asking about the, uh, the biting trace and how I make it. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time out my day today to uh, quickly show you whilst I'm in the fishing shed um, how to make them. So to uh, make this trace then guys, what you're gonna need is a uh, set of crimping pliers, a set of scissors, um, some double-sided crimps, uh, a big swivel and uh, a hook of your choice. Uh, in this case, I've gone for a Varavas Catfish uh, 6.0 and uh, also some mono. Uh, the mono that I'm using in this video is a 150 pound Berkeley Big Game. I came up with this um, idea that when I was out kayak fishing, um, just having a length of uh, 150 pound mono like that, I was getting through quite a few traces whilst I was out on the kayak uh, due to the abrasion of the uh, of the taupe's skin, the teeth, um, when huss, uh, when you're hooking up on Haas and they're wrapping up in the line and stuff like that, it all takes its toll on the uh, on the mono, no matter how how thick it is. And usually it's about 150 pound or 200 pound uh, that I'll be using. Yeah, first thing I do is um, I get my mono and I cut it at an angle just to give it a uh, sharp end, um, so it passes through the uh, double crimp a lot easier. So. Got my mono there, 150 pound Berkeley Big Game. Get the hook that you uh, desire uh, to put on. In this case, just for this video, I'm using a Varavas Catfish uh, 6.0. And I'm gonna pass the line through it. Now it's important at this stage to um, take into account the length of your tag end whilst tying your um, preferred knot onto this hook um, is gonna be uh, your biting trace. So. I'm gonna go for about there, that's about 25, maybe just shy of 30 centimeters. Um, and the knot I'm gonna use for this is just a uh, double thumb knot. So put my thumb on the line, wrap it around my thumb twice, slide the line off, Ooh. slide the line off. So you've got two loops, pass the line through them. Obviously you'd want to uh, wet this with uh, saliva to lubricate it i just slide it down like that so your knot is there and then just slide it down to the hook and pull tight and that won't slip that's a good knot you can get away with just using that as it is with this thicker mono um, if you wanted to tie a trace on the kayak really quick that's a really uh, strong knot i find um, that I've been using um, when I haven't been doing the uh, biting trace but it's obviously resulted without using the biting trace in uh, tying it more frequently <laughs> due to the uh, abrasion I'm getting on the mono. So now that we've got our hook tied on guys um, with our long length of um, tag end there I'm going to add the uh, crimp onto the other end of the line so again just cutting diagonal so it passes through and then I'm not too sure if you can see but that's a uh, double-ended double-sided sorry double crimp um, so just gonna pass that through get to uh, the point where your tag end passes through the other slot in the crimp and then slide that both of them right down to the hook and then now's the now's the time I'm not sure if you can see that there Got my crimp slid right down to the knot and now it's the point where you want to start twisting it so what I usually do is just go about a centimetre and then make a twist keep the hook where it is just keep twisting whilst pushing it back up the line just move it a bit twist it move it a bit twist it round and then what you'll notice is you're starting to get this effect with your mono twisting round itself and if you let go of the hook you'll still it will spin round a little bit but you'll still have them twists 
So now just keep going down whilst twisting. And obviously you can dictate how long this is down to your tag end. I'm doing this one quite long, but as you can see, quite a few turns in it now. So just do a twist, push it back down and pushing it that way back up the line as I'm twisting it. So, so far we've got about that many. Almost there. Right, we're pretty much at the end now. Right, so that's twisted all the way down to the hook. The crimp there and a little bit of tag end left there. So I'm just going to hold the crimp in position where it is. Get my crimp in pliers. And when I'm crimping, I'm going straight in the middle and just a couple of mil short of the end. So there you go. And it's important to remember that crimping this on, you don't have to do it too hard. It's literally just to secure this tw these twists. You've already got your knot there. So just by crimping that slightly and then cutting off your tag end. Send another crimp down the line. So that's your biting trace done. But if you want to make a sort of standoff boom on the other end, when you tie your swivel on, this is just another thing I picked up on when I was uh, using my underwater camera and that. What you can do is do another thumb knot round for this swivel. Put the line through. Look like that. Just pull like that and then down to the let the knot slide down to the swivel. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's tight, this is just for a demo. So your desired knot, it doesn't have to be that one, any knot you prefer. Just tie your swivel on, but leave a big tag end. And I prior to tying that swivel on, I slid another crimp down and uh, just repeat that process again. So get your crimp slid down both sides of the uh, line, your main part of the trace and your tag end from your swivel and just do some more twists. You don't have to do this as, as long, but I've noticed when it's coming off my running ledger or my freeway swivel, which is what I tend to use quite frequently when I'm out on the kayak or the boat for the... Uh, bigger fish is it gives it a nice standoff because obviously the line sticker it kind of acts like a boom if you've just chucked on two clip swivels like I usually do um, in my videos or if you're using a like a zip slide in um, a running ledger clip there you go you crimp that and then up the tag end again you could have slid um, a little bit of uh, shrink tubing to go over that um, I'd actually recommend that one being uh, shrink tubed if you are going to do it um, I would focus more on putting shrink tubing on that one as opposed to the one on the biting trace because what's going to happen is when you're trying to land the fish if you're holding that and the fish takes off and you're there with it it's going to go straight through the palm of your hand and sometimes when you're wearing gloves um, or or your hands are wet or you're wearing gloves and your hands are wet um, it can still slice through you so a little bit of um, shrink tubing over that any color black transparent whatever um, over that and then uh, just go a little bit over the uh, sides of the crimp there and uh, yeah that should um, 
help you out just in case it takes off and uh, comes out of your hand. That would last me a couple of sessions that trace if I don't have to cut the hook um, due to a deep hooked fish but if every time I can get my hook back um, I think that's going to stand up to pretty much um, any fish that's in our waters and uh, last quite a few sessions. So then guys that's how I make my uh, twisted mono biting trace then. Um, that's the one I've just made there for you. You can see I've done it on the uh, swivel end as well and it kind of acts as like a boom as well just by doing that so if you are just using two clip swivels like you might have seen in my um, other videos when I'm offshore so method I like using rather than using an actual boom um, is actually having the uh, biting trace sort of as a boom as well on the swivel end but I hope that you uh, find that um, beneficial and uh, if you are looking to uh, target type uh, huss or, or congas on the kayak this season then uh, best of luck to you if you give this uh, a go uh, let me know in the comments how you get on um, if you've tried this before uh, let me know as well it'd be interesting to hear what other people are doing for their uh, for their eels and their type and that so uh, yeah just an alternative to using the wire um, I honestly I'm not too fast on either um, so I just come up with that it's just easier for me to, to tie I find so uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed that video if you enjoyed the video then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel that'd be much appreciated until the next session um, until the uh, next rig building uh, session uh, tight lines and uh, catch you in the next video